Welcome everyone to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome everyone to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and our guest today is Brandy. Hi guys. Right? A music, music promoter. Yep, slash booking agent. That's right. Amazing. We've known each other for what, two years? Two years ago? Yeah, yeah. That's about it. And you were on my top 10 list to definitely get in front of just because I love your personality. And every time that Aww. we've talked, you're always just like outgoing and supportive and yeah it was exciting to, for you to see you. yes i'm very happy that we we ran into each other and met two years ago i'm very blessed for that so thank yeah. you for that yes so i before i get started i always like to ask my guests how was the process putting your playlist together um it was it was fun but it was hard because you, you start you start going through and you're like okay this song and you're like oh my god and then I, I would send the final thing and i'm like oh no wait wait there's this one and then i'm like oh no no wait and then i'm like do i fit that one in because is it really my favorite is it just my favorite right now but it was it was good it was because it made me think and go down my history of memories and that's what music does for you it's memories that's that's why it's one of your favorite songs not just because of the guitar riff or the drums or because of that singer it's usually attached to memories yeah. and that could go from your from when you're a baby to your teenage to whatever else. So it was kind of cool just to go through the whole, the whole list of memories, I guess, too, as yeah. well. Right. So I love it. I love yeah. it. So if you were to describe your playlist to somebody, what would you say it was like? <laughs> Very Celtic. <laughs> we got a little uh, hip hop. We got a little rock. We got a little metal. We got a little bit of everything. And you know, I like, love that. The only thing you don't have is bagpipes because I'm not a big fan <laughs> of the bagpipes, but everything else I'm good to go. A dropkick Murphy does a really good bagpipe and amazing grace though. They they actually do. I'll, I'll yeah, give it that. I'll give do. that. Yeah. <laughs> right. You ready for your first song? Yes. Okay. Yay. So allow me to adjust my pants. Right. Some clutch. Mob goes wild. Why do you love that song so much? Oh man. Well, clutch, I was introduced to probably i would say 20 plus years ago and the first album that i love clutch because of the fact that they evolved like they were really heavy in their first album and that's when i was into my banger days um and then they just kept on going and they got more bluesy but just dirty um that song reminds me of just going moving to mexico and that was my that was my like i'm getting up and going to mexico and that a whole album just stole me i listened to it nonstop for and I still listen to it nonstop. I get into the gym and that's what I put on. Clutch is my probably my all-time favorite band. No way. Yeah. And it just the involvement of them is just incredible. And they're amazing live. So being in obviously the industry that you're in, what would you say beyond? I'm sure you've seen lots of concerts, but what is like maybe a couple that really stuck out to you that were like phenomenal on stage, off stage? Um, when I was on tour with Foo Fighters, uh David Grohl is the man. He is, I'm not particularly like i'm not a big i don't listen to them but live probably the best show he's an amazing rock and roller he is just he gives it 250 percent for two and a half hours and doesn't stop every show the whole band is incredible yeah um to be honest too this is kind of weird uh, brian adams yeah was probably one of the best shows because it was about his music um his storytelling is amazing but it was just simple like there wasn't many graphics it was just the way he played, like he had the piano, the guitar, him, it was just all spaced out and it wasn't a lot going on. You just focused on him and you just realized how many songs you knew and how amazing this Canadian man is that started when he was like literally kind of a freak of nature as in he hit it big when he was 18 of his first song that he wrote on the piano. Yeah. Like pretty incredible. Um, the third one I would have to say is Mariachi El Bronx. Wow. Um, it was a small show. It was at Broken City. They were actually opened up for Foo Fighters. And we've got the Broken City people that own, the good friends of mine that own that bar. They got them. And it was like a lineup. And it was like literally less than 24 hours. Launched it. And there was a lineup out the door. People were trying to get in. And to see the, the Bronx is a punk band. And then they have Mariachi El Bronx. And it was just like uh, the, all their friends. And they're playing Mariachi. Like it, it was incredible. Probably one of my favorite bands in the world as well. So I would have to say those are my three favorite. I love it. Yeah. So obviously we're around the same age. Yes. Who is your, your favorite lead singer from the eighties? Ooh, that's a good question. Like when you saw them, you're like, oh my God, I'd like to take your leather pants off. Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Oh, 
Mr. Cab Driver, get it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's still one of my favorite. I, I, I've never met that man, but I think if I ever met him, I, I, I don't get starstruck, but I'd do the stutter up or I'd yeah. be like, I want to have your babies. <laughs> Can I please have your babies? <laughs> So obviously being in the industry, have you dated a lot of musicians? Um, I have, I've learned my, I should, well, I've, I, I should say I learned my lesson. Um, I love musicians. However, when I was, when I work in the industry, that's just a no, no, that gets complicated. Yeah. I'd rather keep the respect, especially as a woman being a promoter and a booking agent. When you're on tour with some of these, um, well-known acts, the last thing that you can do is give anybody a reason to talk as being a woman. Yeah. So if you're one of, one of my bosses gave me the best advice ever. And he used to work with death row records and we were on tour with actually flow rider. And he's like, you know, Brandy, he's like, anybody's willing to throw you under the bus to get ahead. So he's like, even if everybody's going back to the hotel room to party, what they're going to see is you walking out at four in the morning, even if there's still people in there and nothing's happened, but someone could see you and light you up. Yeah. Not knowing the background just because they want to get ahead. So don't give anybody a reason to talk. And especially as a woman, it can be very, very, it's a cutthroat industry. Yeah. So you've sure. got to protect yourself. Yeah. So I just kind of, I always keep it clean and I like to have the respect. Like I can yeah. call any of some of these artists. Yeah. One gang bang and you're done. Oh, you're yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, a good time. It could be worth it, but I don't know. <laughs> That's it. You're yeah, out of the yeah. industry. Oh. Or you get more gigs. Yeah. Either which way, just for a little bit anyways. <laughs> But yeah, you, you want the respect from that. I'd rather have the respect and then love you than just love you for a night. Yeah, I agree. So I love that. I love that you said that. Yeah. Ready for the next song? Yes. I like it. Uh, it's a little slow intro, yeah. but I love it. <sighs> Never heard this song before. How fun is it? Super fun. Glass Animals. One of my favorites. I these This band just blows me. The yeah. voice, their, their co like co collaboration, they just, every album just moves me. I love them so much. Yeah. What kind of music did you listen to growing up in high school? I listened to a lot of hip hop, okay. um, TLC. Um, but then I, I, my sister and brother are a lot older than me. So my sister's 13 years and my brother is nine. So I had that. So I had the Brian Adams and the cult. And then I had the hair metal. So I had the Motley Crew and White Snake. And then when I got into, yeah, when I got into, I guess, my teenage years, that's when grunge came out. So I was definitely a Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. But then I'm also into Pennywise and No Effects and the punk. Nice. And then that's when hip hop started coming out, out, out. That's before, that was after NWA, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, I love Easy yeah. and Ice. Um, and yeah, I just kind of grew from there. Um, I got, I, I would say I got a little snobby yeah. at one point because that's, I just think I'm right. Like that's, this is the best <laughs> music and actually it was crap, but. Were you a good girl in high school or a no. bad girl? Well, I was good, but I like to push. Yeah. I like to pull. I, yeah. I like to push. What's something that you did in high school that you never got caught for? Oh goodness. <laughs> what didn't I get caught for? <laughs> I used to just, I think it was basically pit parties and just lying yeah. to the folks being like, oh, I got a flat tire. That's why I was five hours late. Yeah. You know, nothing. I didn't do anything too bad. Like we, we grew up in a small town. I grew up in Lethbridge. Oh, okay. So it was kind of like you did your pit parties and you'd smoke your pot and drop some acid. And hopefully the best that you come down before you have to go home. And if you go home, you just run upstairs. Yes. But I, I really, I didn't think I did that. Well, I used to steal cars. Never mind. I stole yeah. some cars. Stole some cars. Yeah. Because everybody's Lethbridge. Everybody left the keys in there. <laughs> so I get in there and take it for a drive. I returned it. <laughs> But that's about Just it. The beer can in the back, not a big deal. Yeah, no, you got the, the six pack ring around your legs, whatever. <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> Was there bush parties out there in Left Bridge? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of bush parties. We had we used to call them pet parties. We'd have like the CC, the Weir, and Country Chew. And if we one got busted, everybody would yell out Country Chew. And then you'd, everybody would be all three high schools out hang out. We'd all okay. go to the next pit and kind of go into the bushes and listen to music and drink our big bears. Oh, God. Imagine having a big bear now. Oh God, no! A rockaberry. Oh, oh, those two liters. I know. Oh, I, throwing <laughs> that up was not nice. Oh, we remember like sitting outside the liquor store waiting for the next victim to give them cash so they can go buy us a rockaberry. It was always men. Like you know, guy comes out with oh, a yeah. flat of lucky and a rockaberry. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> You're like, this is gonna yes. be a good night. I love yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. 
No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Next song. Hey, we're just talking about these guys. Sticky fingers, right? How to fly. These intros are like crazy back in the day, right? Just take forever to get going. Yep. But I love it. That's what I love about it. It's a great album. It's a wicked album. Um, yeah, Sticky Fingers are from Australia. They, um, to be honest, I got in just introduced to them and they've been around for, I would say about seven to 10 years, maybe a little longer from my knowledge um, with 1002, um, one of those amazing bands that I'm taking on. Uh, they're incredible. They've changed, they've, as much as they say that I've changed their lives, they've changed my lives in a lot of ways. And they've introduced me to some amazing, amazing artists. Um, these guys, Sticky Fingers are the guy's voice, their intros, their harmonies, like it's just, it blows my mind. And I, I can listen to that album all day long, every day for 247. Yeah, incredible. One of my favorite bands. You ever met one of your superstar people that you always wanted to meet being in this industry that you're like, oh my God, I finally get to work with this person? Snoop. Yeah. Snoop was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, Snoop was pretty cool. Did you smoke pot with him? No, I, he'd take me down. I was scared to. And that's why I still smoke pot, but like, that I that scares me. Like he doesn't just smoke pot. He smokes pot. Like I think I'd have one hoot and be face down ass up right quick. <laughs> I would I would I would be a very uh, uh good looking broad at that time. <laughs> I'm trying to still keep an image. I don't think that image would have been a good one. Yeah. What's yeah. the weirdest thing you ever seen backstage that a fan did? Maybe. Um. Not really. Even. I don't think even like uh. I've. <sighs> just them freaking out like I don't understand when they just lose their mind like and I think it's amazing when you see them there's like you've changed my life and I'm just like I, I just don't understand that like I understand yeah. how you can resonate with somebody but when they're bawling and like shaking um I've seen some people like run up and steal stuff really? like and just that's run off change. like that's my shit <laughs> they run off but nothing too crazy like I uh I had a lot of crazy stories about bands and stuff but uh the fans really I love watching them. I love watching to see their reactions and what they actually do. Like in the type of person, like when they're bawling and they're just like freaking out, I'm like, I wish I could feel that. Like, I, I, I don't know how that, like, I, I feel moved by music, yeah. but like to that point where you're just like, you changed my life and bawling. Yeah. That's pretty intense. And someone could do that, that you don't know could do that to you. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So I try not to make a judgment. I mean, I've seen some girls also too give some nice offers like right away oh yeah lay it out boobies <laughs> out and let's i'll do this and this and this and i'm like come on girl like play hard to get a bit yeah <laughs> he's up don't go in don't, don't go, go in so hard <laughs> i'm sure you'll get it Just... what's the most interesting ritual you've ever seen backstage that you've seen an artist do um that's a good question usually i haven't really like the one thing when i met mainer um from Tool, he was an odd cat. Like it was, it was, I would say almost 12, 15 years ago. And it was after, even after the show and he was kind of a dry tour and they were all sitting in a circle and painting each other's toenails. And my girlfriend was just like, she's like, where's the booze? And he's like, it's a dry tour. She's like, fuck that, I'm out of here. And, but there he's like, do you want to paint my toenails? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't paint my own. Like what? And it's made her sit in a circle and he's just, He's a, I love tool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love, I love, love tool a lot, but, uh, yeah, he was just a weird, he's a weird cat. Weird. Yeah. The cool guy. I mean, like teach their own, whatever. If yeah. someone's going to paint your toenails, it's not going to be me, <laughs> but someone will. Well, don't be a line of a women. Definitely. Or men. 100%. Whatever you, you never know, man. Whatever suits your fancy. <laughs> All right. I love the stones. How could you not love the Rolling Stones? Oh. Never really realized how much I loved them. And I always wondered yeah. why I loved them so much. Um, and my mom said that I used to fall asleep every night on the on the speaker listening to the Rolling Stones. No way. Because I wouldn't just randomly go listen to them like through my life. Like don't ever remember yeah. like growing up in high school and stuff and like playing the Rolling Stones. But I just knew that I knew all their songs for whatever reason. Right. And so That's I asked crazy. my mom one day and she was like, oh, yeah, I used to fall asleep on the speaker to the Rolling Stones every single night. There has to be something to be said about, like, even when they say when you're pregnant, yeah, when you listen to music or reading, like, you, you absorb no matter where yeah. you are, how well, how, wh however old you are, you absorb. Music is the biggest absorption and life changing, altering thing I think that there is out there. Yeah. Because you, you remember 
it's like a scent. Like you smell that and you're like, oh, I remember that. Like you smell that and you're like, yeah, oh, it I brings you right back there. Bring back. And music does the same thing from even when you're a baby. Yeah. Like Mel Torme and Frank Sinatra is my dad. As soon as I hear that, I'm just like, I remember being two years old and my dad teaching me how to jive to like big band music and stuff like that. Like it's just, and I can, I can sing every song, but I don't know how because I don't, I haven't listened to it in years, yeah. but I know it. And I've been two or three years old, right? So it makes sense. Why do you love the Stones? Um, well, how could you not? <laughs> I don't know how those guys still kick it. Well, I mean, the drummer just passed away, but he's, I mean, sooner or later, I mean, he was 80. They, I mean, like, seriously. <laughs> you got to let go, man. I mean, Keith, like, Keith Richards probably going to love me. Man. That guy's yeah. a freak of nature. But he's, it's just the movement that they did. Like, and when you read their biographies and stuff like that, and just how they were blues, like, they were all about the blues and yeah um and you could hear it in their music and they're just a staple like keith richards just blows my mind and like that song it's just like you can't help but like get into it yeah it's like a total toe tap oh yeah and you got that strut like you start dancing and you don't even know and you have the strut and it's like well all front men have got their sways and their moves from mick jagger exactly well and that's the thing is mick jagger's got that strut and it brings that out like he it's also embedded in you like as soon as you hear it you're like you have a strut that's right I (laughs) i was working out yesterday and I wanted to listen to just some eighties music, some hair band stuff, but I wanted to see the video. I didn't want to just listen because yeah. I haven't watched much music forever. <laughs> right? And so I watched, it was patience came on and then um, stairway to heaven came on. And I was like, Oh my God, Axel just totally copied Robert plant. Like the whole, oh, yeah. like the whole entire move. Like they're literally doing the same moves. 100%. So it was just kind of cool to see. Cause I've never, well, I haven't seen those videos for so long, but I was like, oh well, and what God. you what you realize too is that when you start listening to bands and everything that you really focus on, you actually start realizing who their influences are. And you can tell. Like, I mean, every every band that starts out, I mean, the reason why there's they want to start a band is because of another band, and that's their influence. And they take it, they take it after them, right? Yeah. So then you see like the moves and even the guitar riff or that sound, and it's all copied from somebody that's from right. somewhere. Right. So it makes sense. So yeah. you're single. I am a single woman. You are single. Yeah. All right. What kind of guys do you like? Oh, goodness. Guys, guys, kind of guys I don't like. Name the kind of guys you don't like. I don't like narcissistic, pretentious. I like, yeah, I, you have to be humble. You have to have a good heart and be a humble man. That's humble. Hum, being humble is longevity in relationships any kind of relationships whether it's friendships romantic business if you're humble you have longevity if you're not humble you got nothing yeah. and it's going to end very fast for you so how are you dating in this world that we live in today i am not no no i'm focused on myself and my career right now um i've got a lot of great people around me that feed the love that i need right now does that mean with benefits no <laughs> I actually i'm actually clean without benefits right now crazy i um i i kind of realized too that i was dating a lot of uh the same guy different story or no same story different guy yeah so what was that same story um unavailable the chase so that kind of put me back into my place of there's a common denominator right now and that's me so what's what am i not happy with myself yeah so i had to really readjust and start working on myself to find because I, I mean of course i want to find somebody i want to grow with somebody i want to build an yeah, empire with somebody for sure but until i'm happy and fulfilled with myself and i don't think i'll ever be fulfilled fulfilled but to a point that i'm like okay i can allow somebody in i can't well i can't put them through that and i can't put myself through that over and over and yeah. over again so i just kind of took a break when was your last relationship um i dated someone in june okay how yeah. long about three weeks three four weeks <laughs> <laughs> that's how long it usually lasts and it's like nope <laughs> we're good it's not working out yeah no i don't i haven't really dated dated i've you know there's always everybody's got their issues and their um you ever thought about switching sides i did that once girls and? are too oh, they're complicated so they how t- many times you do this is it just one trial and error no or? i you know i did it a couple times where it was just like oh i tried it in my 20s and i'm like oh I dated a girl and i'm like you guys talk a lot like you want to talk about everything. I mean, maybe I'm more of a mindset of a guy. Yeah. Um, I right? would be like the worst girl lover. <laughs> Why is that? 
Because I don't think I could go down on a girl. Yeah, well, I'd let her go down on me. I'd be like, go ahead. Yeah. You want to finger paint me? You want to go down on me? Use a toy. Hey, hey, give her. We're all good. I don't think I'm going to do that to you, though. I'll yeah. kiss you, play with your titties a little bit. Yeah. But I don't, I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess maybe I was a selfish lover then because I was not too into it either. <laughs> so I was just like, you can do whatever you want, girl. Yeah. I got a lot to work with, a lot to work with. But get down there. I was like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, then I kind of went through another phase again, just recently, we'll say about probably about a year and a half ago where I was just like, you know what, maybe I'm going to try because I'm attracted to women. Women are yeah. beautiful and I do get attracted to women and had a nice weekend. And I was just like, no, I just, I like Dick. Yeah. I love Dick. I love Dick. I love Dick. <laughs> I love all the things about it. How many Dick pics do you get a week? Oh my God, that's hilarious. So I was in the studio last night with 1002. We were recording and I uh all of a sudden my phone starts lighting up. And like we're talking randoms, like just guys from Instagram. You're like, I think you're your gorgeous, dick. you got beautiful eyes, and all of a sudden, bam. And here's I'm like, dick. here's my dick. And it's not even a nice looking dick. Like you can't even put a bow tie on and make it look good. Like it's just like, I'm glad you're proud of it, but it's all shaved. I don't even just, know what's happening. Ugh. I just, and I'm just like, and they're, I'm laughing and they're like, what? And then all of a sudden, bang, it happened again. And then bang, it happened. He's like, Elijah was just like, how many dick pics do you get? And I'm like, I get a lot in a week. And I'm like, I just don't understand. Like, I'm just not like, if I see a hot guy, I'd be like, oh, here's my boobs. Here's my titties. <laughs> You're like, how do you like me now? Yeah, like, it's kind of an odd thing. It's just do. kind of, it's just weird. Like you just, and some of the times that I'm glad you're proud of yourself, but sometimes yeah. like, you really maybe shouldn't be like, yeah. Like how many other, how many other girls have seen your dick? Yeah. Or some of them are a little weird looking. Yeah. Like, like I just curved to the left and bent and weird, like weird mushroom shapes. Yeah. I don't, know what's I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't, my eyes, my eyes. I like, got a dick pic a little while ago. Like you? my first one, I was like excited, but at first it was like aggressive. Mm -hmm. It was like, Hey, Samantha, here's my dick. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this guy's fucking with me. Yeah. Obviously, you know, yeah. this is randomly. And it was an aggressive dick. Yeah. And I was like, uh, hey, this is Frank. You got the wrong number. Just to play around. Yeah. Sends me a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Are and you I'm serious? Like, I'm never going to get rid of this guy. No. What do I got to say next? Oh man, I've had some major catfishes too, like where I didn't know I am I'm a smart girl. I'm not, I'm not a dummy. And I've had the catfishes where this one guy was using Afghanistan and he's and I'm like, here we go. Where, 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 where's the money coming? I need money for something. Yeah. He's like, I love you. And I'm like, well, how do you like, I don't even know you, but I'm going to play along. Cause I'm thinking that he's going to die. Yeah. Like, oh, sorry. Like he died in war, which I was like, at this time, I'm like, it's not really anything going on in Afghanistan, but whatever, <laughs> I'll play along. And then it was just like, he's like, I'm coming for you. He's like, I'm getting deployed and I'm coming for you. I'm like, okay. And he's like, what's your address? Oh. And I gave him my, my old warehouse address. And he's like, I'm like, well, you just, if you're sending your stuff, I said, I just, give it to the I'll go pick it up and he's like no I need an address and I'm like so I gave him an old warehouse address yeah. and then he's like I bought you a ring and I bought you this necklace and he showed me these pictures like this ring and this necklace and I'm just like oh my god like what do you it's like a big gold heart <laughs> <laughs> and then the ring was just like I, I don't I don't even know and then he has showed me a vehicle with all his luggage pack and then the officer was calling me he's like oh well you know your husband I'm like my husband <laughs> We just met. I, I don't know. And he's like, well, you, you need to, for the duty free, you need to pay 750 bucks. I'm like, well, duty free. Oh yeah. <laughs> like totally. And then they had the mail or her husband. They even had like the, the delivery service, whatever they had a fake. Wow. They went all out, but then it was like, there were spelling errors and every email had like a six, nine, six, nine or whatever, like at gmail yeah. dot six, nine or whatever. And then it would be like, we love your business. And I'm like, no bit, like I'm a business owner. I have a distribution company. I've had many businesses. No business going to be like, I love. Yeah. In a proposal. There's just not happening. So, and then he even invented a son and his son was emailing wow. me. Oh, it, I carried it on. Wow. It was kind of entertaining. So then I finally was like, look it, if you're going to do this right, I'm not saying I'm giving kudos to this, but look it, you need to edit your thing first. You spell, you have spelling errors. You're ending all your Gmails with a uh, 69, 69 or 587. Like every email in a business is not Gmail. Let's get that straight. Also too, like, I just looked up these pictures and they're online. 
like you're failing right now and he's like but i love you and i'm like oh my god he wouldn't give up so i only just blocked him but i thought for sure he was That's gonna crazy. die but he didn't die i had uh, a guy reach out to me a couple weeks ago when i started this podcast i'm getting a lot of these people wanting to friend me and yeah so this guy and i've had about nine of these hi how are you where are you from i'm like you fucking added me like you know i'm from canada whatever playing along i'm like i'm yeah. gonna play along with this guy because i've had so many of them last little while he's like uh i'm a widow and i'm like <laughs> it's always a widow i'm like okay Sorry. He's like, are you married? I'm like, yeah, happily married 21 years. I'm good to go. Like, you know, I don't think my husband appreciate me and you talking. Well, I just want to be friends with, with you. And I said, listen, you're like the 13th guy whose wife's died. died. And then he couldn't get, he didn't understand. He's like, I don't understand. I go, yeah, that's, 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 that's it. That's, we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. We're ending this one right now. <laughs> I know once I see that's like, a, 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 I'm on, a, I'm in the military and I'm like, abort, 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 <laughs> abort. All right. All right, ready? Yes. Roll the bones. It's a great song. Oh. I love that you have some Rod Stewart on here too. Yeah, man. It's awesome. Why do you love this song so much? Shaky Graves. Shaky motherfucking Graves. That guy is probably one of the most talented musicians. Like he's a one man band. He's got his his 50 suitcase with the symbols he's got his harmonica he's got his guitar and his voice oh yeah oh so it goes his voice just rumbles when you see this man in concert he's another one i would have his babies yeah 100 i'd have 10 of them <laughs> for sure he is just so talented he's been around for a while um when you listen listen to like he's even when you get into youtube and it just, like talks about how he got his name like dropping acid and he's just a homegrown boy and he's just talented and his voice is insane his writing's insane you know like i want to bring him here to canada hopefully next year i want to bring him here and that's that's one thing about being a promoter is i get to bring in what i want to see no no bring in someone what everybody else wants to see too i guess but yeah usually it's like i want to see these guys so i'm going to bring him here yeah and set up a little tour for him and then you create these relationships and your friends like it's great like he's yeah this song is one of the songs i probably listen to almost every day because his voice is just insane wow i love yeah. it yeah all right Ooh. i have some color such good little uh little hops in this song oh kind of makes you want to get a tambourine oh, sometimes oh, eh? Yeah, he's about uh, Amy Winehouse, break my heart. Yeah, it's crazy. The good guy young, I tell you. Always. You know? you know, they're so talented and people love them, but they just don't love themselves. No, well, and the, the, what you realize is that a lot of the most talented um, musicians are stuck in their head, they're geniuses, and they don't know how to get out. And yes, music is an outlet, but if you don't know how to deal with the outlet too, like, like Kurt Cobain, um, Chris Cornell, like there's so many the list goes on and on and on that they get trapped in their head and yeah. they have the issues where they go to drugs thinking that it mends it but it, it mends it for the time being for that one moment that it just adds to it and it's it's sad yeah. it's really really sad yes um, but like i said the good die young and there's a reason why i mean everybody has their time yeah right like, what was it like growing up in in brandy's house full of music um families musicians um very athletic. I was a dance, jazz dancer. Brother was a hockey player. Sister was track. Um, I grew, strict, open. Ah, by the time I came along, because that was a mistake, right? So they were tired. Like my sister was thirteen years older, and then my brother was nine. So the time I came along, they were just like, "Do whatever, girl. <laughs> like, just don't be an asshole." And I was an yeah. asshole now and again, but they and they were so much older. Like my parents were the ages of my friends' grandparents, right? within reason right so yeah. and they, they grew up in a different time where like you can go come drink at the house yeah my parents were cool and filled with music and you could talk to them and, and they turned a blind eye a lot and i got away with a lot because of oh that's what kids do like yeah. you jump in the truck and you go on the back dirt road and drink some beer and if you get a flat tire or boys will be boys kind of thing yeah you got reprimanded but it wasn't it, my parents were awesome yeah you ever do anything really bad that you're really scared to go home for they Ooh. probably knew and you're really worried when i didn't come home from a camping trip when i said i'm like told my friend to call my mom 
And I was, I was supposed to go in general. And then my mom's like, okay, fine, go, but you have to be back on this day. And I'm like, yeah. And then I got drunk. It was May long weekend and I got drunk. And I told my friend that was going back. I'm like, call my mom and tell her I'm coming back tomorrow. Well, that wasn't happening. So she called my brother. She's like, you go get her fucking ass right now. <laughs> my brother found me in like Pincher Creek, but fuck nowhere. I don't even know how he found me. Rolls up in his Daytona and he's like, you get your ass in here. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and that first time I was drunk, I was like, yay. And then my brother's like, this isn't a hey moment. Get your ass in the car. Like mom and dad are pissed. And I'm, I'm drunk because I'm in the day yeah. and I'm drunk. I'm 16. Who are you more afraid of, mom or dad? Oh, dad. That my dad was like, you know, the 70s show Red Foreman. Yeah. That's Donald Bogusky. That's my dad. Everybody just knew you didn't fuck with Don. Like he's he'd chase you with a hockey stick. Like he was Red Foreman from the 70s show. So <laughs> mom, mom, I could get away with, but then the dad, when he gave you that look and that voice, yeah. it was like fucking run, run fast and lock that door and don't come out for a couple days. Seriously. And they're still in the fridge or where are they? Yeah. Now? Yeah. My mom's in Lethbridge and my dad's in Lethbridge as well. Um, yeah. He's in a home now. Um, he's 80, 84. My mom's oh, wow. 80. My mom, she's a freak. She's a unicorn. She's a freak of nature. She looks like she's 55. And she, like, she's, I hope I look and act and everything. Like she is just a beautiful in and out, beautiful woman in and out. She's amazing. That. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I was going to ask, who do you love more, your mom or your dad? I'm a mama's, I'm a mama's girl. <laughs> I love pops. I love my pops, but I was always been a mama's girl. Yeah, me and my mom are we're best friends. She's she's my sanity. Yeah. She definitely is. Yeah. She go to have a hard day, go yeah. talk to mom. I'm having a melt meltdown. She's the one that can drag me out of it in a heartbeat. She just her voice, she knows what to say, and she just has the best advice. Like that woman. I don't see a teary eyed even thinking about it. It's awesome. She's amazing. I yeah. love it. Right. Mm. Haven't heard these guys. Oh, mm. Right. Mm. Way down we go. Yeah. It's a great song. Yes, I love doing this because I'm actually creating my own little playlist of all these people that I interview and yeah. get to save their songs. And it's it's just really cool to to do that on the side as well. Because then yeah. I get to oh. I get to hear it all the yeah. time. So it's really cool. And then I get to like kind of just be a part of that again. Yeah. Right. Brings up lots totally. of totally. So why do you love Cleo? And that song, well, I saw Kaleo, I guess it'd been 2018, I think, at, uh, forget what, uh, Jubilee, I think it was. Okay. My girlfriend brought me to the concert. She's like, oh my God, Kaleo. And I didn't really know about them. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. And I, I did fall in love with them. But however, I just kind of like, oh, they were good. Really great show. However, just recently, I uh, started managing this band. My sister actually was in Brooks or somewhere around there in a small town and sent me this video of this band and she sends me some stuff and I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> but then I listened to these guys and they didn't have any PA and I'm like, wait a minute. And so then I did a little research and I reached out to them on Instagram. I'm like, you know, I'm, my name's Randy Lee. I'm a promoter slash booking agent. I used to work for one agency, still work with them and partners with them. And I'm really interested in talking to you to see if where you guys are at, I'd like to do, maybe book you some shows. And so, and all their stuff that they had on YouTube and stuff was really old. Like it was a couple of years old and like, they're, they're young. Yeah. Good looking kids and good kids, but they're young. I shouldn't say kids they're adults, but yeah. um, I guess we're in our forties. We can call anybody a kid <laughs> at this point. But anyway, so they then. don't sleep with you. You're a kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> High fives, girl. Yes. Um, so then um, I went to, so they were playing in Calgary that following Wednesday and they're like, come check us out. And he got up. Elijah, he got up and sang the song and I just fell in love. Like he put another heart all over the song for me. And I started looking at Cleo a totally different way because of him, yeah. the way he sang it, the way his heart was into it. And then I started listening to Cleo a lot more and I'm just like, yeah, like, I don't know why I didn't give it a chance before. I'm not saying I didn't get a chance. I just didn't really, I got to listen to a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I would have to say Elijah from 1002 got me back into Kaleo 110%. Yeah. He, yeah, moved it. Yeah. He moved me completely. I was just like enamored. I'm like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You're 21. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. I'm like going to be your manager too. So I guess that's out of the picture. <laughs> all the <this> time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I own you now. <laughs> So 311, Amber, what a great song, eh? Yeah. Um, I feel like I haven't heard this song forever. One so it's cool still. to see it on your playlist. 
tourist memory or um yeah just living in fernie oh okay awesome living in fernie and were you a snowboarder or a skier i was a sponsor snowboarder at one point in time but no at that way. time i moved there in the summertime and it was about four of us girls moved there and just decided to fuck up fernie and we did we fucked that place up really good for about six five months um yeah with 311 it's just i at that time it was like sublime and all that kind yeah. of stuff right and i love him in general he'd be another one that'd be like mm, i'd date you <laughs> and do more with you just even for a night <laughs> um i love 311 i still listen to their albums all the time i actually want to bring them here as well to canada i don't know how long i don't know how well their concert would turn out but just for myself i just i've just me i'll i'll, I'll pay you the money just yeah. so i can just stare and just fall in love I just led that song the two just the writing for Amber is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, it is yeah, even there's this, there's even how they sing a cure song that's amazing. He said his voice is just insane. It's so easy to listen to. Like you just you just go to that island in the middle of nowhere and just kind of like, yeah, you know. I yeah, love it. Man. So let's rewind. You were you were a snowboarder. I was. I was a shitty one, but I was. But you got sponsored. I was my thing was more when I got sponsored, just because I was it was with arson. And I don't even know if that brand's around anymore. I don't think so. It was Canadian brand. And I, yeah, I was more, I more sold a lot of their clothes and I looked good in it and I would do competitions, but I was always such a, sh I was such a, I was always hungover and I just sucked. I didn't win anything. <laughs> I didn't win anything, but it was fun though. It was yeah. fun while it lasted. And then um, I started, I had to get older and I got a little more scared of doing tricks yeah, and for sure. that's when you get injured and yeah. now I just coast. I just cry down the mountain. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Oh man. I, I snowboarded for all of a half an hour at a Kokanee ski party. And yeah, I went up the, like the little ramp there yeah. and went down, fell 75 times. My ass was so sore. And I said, fuck it. I'll meet you guys. <laughs> and they showed up around one o'clock and I was already had this place lit up. Oh yes, girls. Yeah. No, I think we had I, a fun time. My first time snowboarding was that way. Like I literally, they dropped me. It was my best friend Nicole Soroka. Um, they were at Castle Mountain. They dropped us. The boys dropped us off the very top of the mountain. Like they took us to the very top. And Castle Mountain's probably one of the best hills to ride. The vert is sick. Took us about five hours to get down. They just left us. And her and I, when it was powder day, so we had the most fun. Like yeah, we're falling and laughing, yeah. and you know, you have my best girlfriend, and we're having a blast. And they come check on us, but it took us five hours to get down. Yeah. Um, I was so like the next day I oh. couldn't even my abs, my ass, my arms <laughs> trying to push yourself out of the powder. But by the time I got down, I was turning because the steeper it is, yeah. it's easier for you to turn. So that's how I learned. And then I just took off from there and then it kind of just, uh, blew up a little bit. Like I said, I was a sh shitty, like I, I should not have never been sponsored. Like, please don't take it that I was really that good. I don't know why, <laughs> but I took it for the season. I got free clothing. Got any fears? a big fear something you're afraid of failure yeah in general failure yeah. of um i don't want to be that 55 year old woman sitting at the bar mm -hmm. being sad or That's talk about one. what if or what i did i think we're very similar um with that because i think we're both very very driven yeah, yeah. And we'll do anything and everything to go and like achieve some kind of success. Yeah. That's one of my biggest fears too. It is. It's scary. Like it's because like, you know, like we've I'm sure we have we have so much in common that um we've tried a lot. And I'm not saying I failed. And the fail there's no such thing as failure because if you don't, if you if there's failing, if you don't learn from it. Yeah. I I'll if I it comes around, I want to do it, I'll do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I learn from every yeah. step and I know that if there's a process, the reason where I'm getting to. Yeah. But that is my biggest fear that I would be sitting at a bar being like, I used to dance yeah. with Janet Jackson dancers when I was 21 and still counting my change. Yeah. Trying to get my next drink. Trying to get like somebody to being buy a, a drink. Yeah. I just, that's probably my biggest fear. Like a really bad lookalike of Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're like, Lenny, you put on some weight today. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Okay, I would love to go see Rod Stewart. Oh, there's are supposed to be coming. Uh, we'll go. I, would I will talk to, to I, I'll get, it's, it's a date, you and I. Yeah, that would be unreal. You know, obviously yeah. just, I think he would just do an amazing show. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, I. Would you ever sleep with Rod Stewart? Fuck yeah, I would. Like, how old is he now? He's 75, probably. <laughs> I. He knows what he's doing. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. I think I can go on top. Oh yeah. I'd close my eyes. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little blindfold on. I would. I put, I put my hands through his spiky hair, <laughs> <laughs> shimmy it out. Oh, Rod! I love Rod, man. He's like, I get if you let my body. That's probably one of yeah. my favorite songs as well. Like, I love Rod Stewart. Old Rod Stewart, seventies Rod Stewart, all over it. Yeah, yeah. Is there a song or a mem- or sorry, is there a memory from that song? Um, I think because I used to sing it in a band. Because I I can sing Rod Stewart fairly, not too bad, and I think it was just. This meant, I don't know. I think it was my dad too. Yeah. Because my dad used to, every Friday night, he would be rum night. And so we would sit there or he would sit, drink his rum and play records. And so we'd dance and he'd teach me about music. He taught me about jazz. He taught me about Miles Davis. He taught me and he would, he loved Rod Stewart as well. And I think just sitting there listening and ex- even like, like, oh, you know what I should have put on there was uh, Wings. Um, that's probably one of my favorite albums of all time um, with Paul McCartney, uh, the transitions. Like my dad would sit there and just, this is before it's time and the transitions of every song. Like that yeah. album is genius in my mind. It's fucking genius. So I think a lot of them of these older ones reminds me, it's my dad. Yeah. My dad embedded the knowledge and the love for music. In I me. love that. Yeah. I love that. So you're in a band. I was. Lead singer. I was a lead singer. Leather pants. Yep. I was a rockabilly. Yes. I was a rockabilly girl. Um, I played drums. Um, I was shitty at the drums, but a girl in the drum kit, you can't go wrong. All you have to do is to, 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 <laughs> to wear a bikini top. Yeah, whatever. And I looked good as a little rockabilly girl. Um, I, yeah, I, I just kind of, we didn't really do much. Like it was more of just pissing around. We did a couple shows. I'm more like, I, I'm a karaoke singer, as I call it. Like I can do harmonies. I can back up. I can sing my certain songs like Betty yeah. Davis eyes. I can sing Valerie. I can sing Maggie May. I can, I used to write my own stuff and I could, but I'm just, I like, I like the back end of the business. Yeah. I don't. So what's your go-to karaoke song? Betty Davis eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do a little, do a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's hear the chorus. Her hair is hollow. Go. Her lips are sweet and surprise. <laughs> I love it. So good. You have a great voice. Thank you. It's an amazing voice. <clears throat> uh, I hate, I hate, and I think it was another thing of when we record, I hate the sound of my voice. Really? I absolutely I love hate it. it. Raspy. I love that. Her hair is never cold. Yeah. It's kinda, so good. I you. love it. Thank you. All right. So fun, hey? Yeah. One of my favorites. Very cool. Uh, Eagles of death metal. We need to like get some, bring those jeans back. That looks oh, like yeah. a Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love album. Yeah. It, it totally does. That's what it reminds <laughs> me of too, man. Uh, yeah, he's an eccentric dude. He's amazing. He's, uh, he's after the parachuting that he kind of lost his mind a little bit. And that's fair. I mean, um, he, I haven't heard much. I don't know if they're doing anything right now. I would love to bring them back here. Yeah. Um, there he's still one of their but their albums are still one of my favorites i love eagles of death metal and have you ever had a stalker yeah yeah had a couple one t- tell me about one stalker story um i had his one name is he stalking i don't i don't remember his name he <laughs> he got me on facebook oh. and at the time it's actually just i would say a couple years ago um i was guest bartending and stuff at king's head now and again right and uh he actually saw a picture that i was working there and showed up and I, I and I couldn't talk to him on Facebook, but like nothing like, you know, I'm, I'm a nice person. I don't want to ever hurt anybody's feelings, yeah. but when you put me, when I'm not feeling safe, yeah, I'll put you in your place. Yeah. I'm, I, 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 yeah, I'm very stern. However, I could just see, like I saw him standing there and lurking. And then I was like, I didn't know if that was him or not. And then the next day he's like, yeah, he's like, I showed up at King's head and was staring at you. And he's like, you're so gorgeous. And I'm like, oh my God, that was him. So then I noticed that I saw him too. I think that following week, like he, I saw him at a grocery store and I kind of got a little weird that like, yeah. it was just random places. And I'm like, okay, do you know where I live? Yeah. You got me on GPS. Like what's, what's going on kid? Like, why can't, yeah. Why can't it be somebody else? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not to be me, but yeah, I kind of got a little weird. And then I, I just kind of did a little talking to him. Like, dude, like he, I got a boyfriend, which I didn't, but I'm like, and I, it was my friend. That's a big, big football player. Basically. Yeah tattooed scary like yeah he's over there he's actually gonna skin you yeah yeah so i mean you can keep on going if you want but you're yeah. not gonna win on this one yeah yeah i was uh 
befriended right quick. Have you ever stalked anyone? I don't think I have. I think I've been obsessed. <laughs> yeah. A little bit too much. Like, and you knew them and you were doing a whole bunch of stuff for them. Yeah. Basically like that. Like I was being overly nice, like trying yeah. to buy their love. Yeah. But other than that, I don't think I ever really. Ah. <laughs> Clarify stalking. <laughs> is it like borderline? If I show up at their house, I'll appear on the peak of their windows. Yeah. Is that stalking? Yeah. Two in the morning, banging yeah. on the windows. Yeah. Like, I love you. Is that stalking? It's not really. Oh, I, th I thought that was love. Fuck. I think most girls do that. Yeah, I thought that was normal. 18. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I like to play this Kay. game. Um, you can pick any card except for the ones that are right here. And then you just got to read the read the card out loud, answer the question. If it's too much, you don't have to answer I know, the question. I'll answer but yeah, I think it's gonna be okay. All right, all right. Could be really. <laughs> have you ever farted in the elevator? <laughs> Fuck yes, I have, and I was. It was bad. It was just me and this hot guy. No shit. And this is not a joke. Really hot guy. It was really hot guy, and I was like, I was training, so I was eating a lot of vegetables. So it was like gnarly. Like it was. I was I was grossed out, and yeah i tried like as soon as did I, he look at you like well i kind of farted and then the door opened and i fucking booked it <laughs> i just let it linger because i know he had to go up one more and i fuck i like i booked it because i i smelled it like it was really it's bad. vegetables yeah it's not nice protein and vegetables is not nice no uh yeah yeah i've farted a couple times now. and sometimes i think it's funny but that wasn't funny that time i fart on the plane and blame it, blame it on tyler all the time it's the worst oh really that's good <laughs> yeah you should and it stinks so bad <laughs> and i'm always like my brother's on this side and tyler's on this side and i like bust out laughing i can't stop so laughing. laughing and then like it makes me fart more then i get nervous that i'm farting <laughs> And then they're like, everybody thinks we're farting on the plane. Right oh my now. God. Um, I, yeah. I always hate coming back from Vegas because those are the worst. Yeah. And that's because everybody's feeling the same way and their bodily functions are not like, there's nothing solid I'm coming out of you. There's nothing smelling good that's coming out of you. You don't even smell good. You're, you've are you left your, you lost your dignity a long time ago. <laughs> it's the worst. Saturday and, at one o'clock. And I always get that stinky person right beside me and they're lighting it up. And I'm like, I'm trying not to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> already from because i haven't slept yeah. yet i'm still drunk and flying and they're lighting it up and i'm just like seriously like that's not that's not me motherfucker <laughs> that's you let's get that straight i see you i see you all right ready lost Ooh. on you lp it's a great beginning oh she's amazing her voice you gotta listen to her voice man yeah she's got a great voice her voice is insane like this Oh, I love her. So do you just love her? You got a memory from this song? Um, actually, yes. It's a memory. So my good friend Matt Doherty, who's a drummer for the dudes, the high kicks. One night we got all banged up. And we're sitting in his van drinking beer. Go figure. Um, and he's like, Brandy's like, and that's actually goes into gooey too, um, glass animals. He's like, listen to this. He's like, this is the sexiest song, you know, sexiest song ever. And it was gooey. And then he's like, listen to this girl. LP he's like I think of you because of your voice he's like I can see like I think of you when you hear this and I started listening to her and I'm like whoa like if you see the live version of yeah. her on YouTube that's live and her voice is insane so she never really like so I did some research on her um I would like to bring her her, her here as well um she never the states wouldn't really even give a fuck about her so yeah. she went to Europe she blew up in Europe like she's huge in Europe. And then all of a sudden the States are looking at her and now she's starting to blow up even more. Right. But this woman is absolutely enthralling her voice, her pitches, her writing. Like I just, I melt. And it's all because of Matt Doherty introduced me to her and I could give him thanks. So, like, so many times I've known Matt for over 20 years, probably one of the best drummers in Calgary, probably one of the best drummers I've ever seen. Um, such a talented man. He's a really good friend of mine. I hold him very dear to my heart and he always, he tells me straight shooter he calls my shit and he introduced me to a lot of great music so yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good memory because he's matt doherty is one yeah he's my he's my angel yeah. yeah who is your top three female artists Ooh, that's a good one i'd say lp um amy winehouse um and ooh, that's a good one I don't listen to a lot of women, which is really kind of crazy. 
And you know what's going to happen is I'm going to get on my car and be like, fuck, <laughs> why did I say this? <laughs> what is one female artist that you, you can't even believe has made it to this? Oh, you spotlight? know what? Pink. Yeah. Pink. Pink's pretty cool. Pink's mine. Yeah. For sure. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is the most talented woman out there. That woman can sing jazz, blues. She can sing anything. She yeah. is a woman of all trades. I buy it down to her. Yeah. 110 She's amazing. In She's amazing. And Pink, Pink. I love Pink. She is just her heart and her mm -hmm. voice. I get behind that any day. Yeah. Yeah. So who's that one singer that you're like, are you serious? You made it. You made it. And this person is barely scraping by. Oh, that's a good one. I don't even know. Um, there's a lot of shit out there. Like type. Like, and you, everybody's going to hate me for that. I can't stand Taylor Swift. I cannot stand that broad. She is. She's a shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, She, I just, I, you know, I, I can see the talent within reason, but I just don't like her performance on stage. It's very crazy. She looks like she's jerking. Like you can yeah. tell she's shitty in bed. Like yeah. he, she's got no flow. It's just like, oh, here, ah, <laughs> here I am. And I, Miley Cyrus, love her. She yeah. can kill it. But Taylor Swift, no. Miley twerks so oh so my you know. god that's that's a kind of the end you yeah, twerk you're you right. gotta twerk what else can you do that's right the girl's gotta make a living that's right so we got two songs left I gotta, I'm gonna pick them though Kay. this one because I love the Beastie Boys yep right I'd love to do I'd love to walk in a bar one day and just have this song come on oh we'll do it. I'll make that happen for you 100 <laughs> percent yeah it's such a good song yeah why do you love the Beastie Boys Beastie Boys well then uh, BC Boys is memories as well. Um, growing up, like Eggman is one of my favorites. Yeah, Paul Boutique is probably my favorite album. Um, just growing up, I, I was a skater girl. I was a tomboy, so all the I hung out with boys. Uh, my good friend Matt Way, the twins Matt and Brian Way, who I'm still still best friends with since we were 13. Um, we always just BC Boys. Uh, uh, Bates, Master Bates, and Trevor Cook. We'd get smoke joints in my car and just fucking throw down the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys is just that those albums that how could you not? Yeah. Like Brass Monkey reminds me of Darren Takasaki in his big Jeep. And he was he was I had a crush on him. He was, I think it was my it was my best friend's brother. He had this Jeep and he always played Brass Monkey. Yeah. That funky. And we'd be at a pit parties and I'm just like, oh my God, I love him. <laughs> Uh, it's just it's memories like bc boys is a white group that pulled it out like they're the boys from the bronx man yeah and pulled it out they're the white boys that can rap and throw down and have all those funky vibes and everything else they changed history they changed music yeah and they so still great boy band so do you have any boy bands that you're like all right i love this boy band <laughs> color me bad hey this is good <laughs> I want to sex you up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. seriously, I still listen to that song and it makes me so happy. I love Color Me Bad and yeah. it's so bad and I know and I love it. <laughs> it's so bad and I love it. It's so good. It's though. so good. I can't complain, man. <laughs> I love it. So, last song. You ready? Mm -hmm. It's like one of my favorite albums. Thank you. <laughs> love easy. Ah, oh, easy, eh? Yeah. Good. Thank you for picking that one. You're welcome. They were the first person to put an NWA on their playlist. And uh, I'm always curious, right? So I, I haven't got a lot of Eminem, which I was kind of shocked by. Yeah. I haven't got a lot of, I just got Two Live Crew, which I was totally jacked about. Yes, yeah, like totally. Right um, this is from a girl, uh, a girlfriend that I literally have not talked to in 35 years, who I'm doing an interview tomorrow with. Yeah. From my elementary school, put on face down, ass up. And I was like, fuck yeah, some two live. Yes, girl. Right. So good. And then when I got your playlist, I was like, yes, finally, finally. Like some old school. Well, and I thought about too, I'm like, okay, like, is this going to be PG 13? Like, I didn't know because I was going to get down and dirty. Like I was going to put like, yeah, I was going to get down and dirty, but I'm like, I'll, I'll throw it in WA and see how that goes. And we go from there. I'm sure it's not going to be our last time meeting. No, so we, sure. we get, we get into it later. Yeah. I love it. NWA, yeah, man. Like they changed music history. Like that song too just resonated. I mean, I was, I remember getting the CD and had the, as you can see on there, the adult vibe, the adult advisory. I remember listening to my, in my, in my room, like turning down and be like, fuck the boy. And be like, fuck. He's coming straight from the underground. And I'm like, you know what I mean? 
And my mom, yeah. my mom could figure out, she's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, oh, just end up way, mom. And like getting all my rap deals down. Like I've always been a hip hop girl. And then, like I said, it, it just the guys that I hung out with, just they was like, oh my God, I stole this from my brother. Listen to this. And I was like, oh my God, I fucking love this. Like I was in grade five, I think. And then they just changed music history. And like with this song, especially too, like that's what they went through. Everything in that song is what yeah. they went through. And we, as being white, we, especially in, in, Canada, in Canada, in Canada in general, we don't, uh, we don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. And just touring with a lot of these guys, like with Warren G and a lot of these legendary, like Buster Rhymes and all that, like shit's, shit was real and shit is still real. Yeah. So I really, I, and I love just ice. He's just. I, I'd have his babies too. <laughs> so what's some words of wisdom that you would give to somebody with all your kind of adversity that you went through in your life and all the things that have happened, good, bad, and the ugly. What's some words of wisdom that you give somebody listening to the podcast? The people, the people that follow you and would be behind you when you're down are the ones that are going to be with you when you're up. Cherish them, tr- like be humble. Just be humble. I can't express that enough. Just be humble. That's the, that's the longevity. I mean, you, you're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. Like life's tiresome. You get tired. People, we all, we all are tired. Yeah. So just re- <clears throat> realize what you got around you and love that. Yeah. And love yourself. That's 100%. Great. great advice. Yeah. So I want to give you some time to promote yourself because I think it's important. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So you just share with everybody what you got going on, what you're doing, what you want to do. Well, I'm with um, one agency. I'm partnered up with one agency. They're based out of Vancouver. They're a booking agency. I also work with Ebony and Ivory Group. It's an entertainment group. Also BD Entertainment. We are promoters. We are up and coming promoters in Calgary. We will be putting on shows through Calgary, Vancouver. Um, I'm also managing 1002. If you need to check out an amazing band, look them up. They are going to be huge. These kids are amazing they make my arm hair stand up um i yeah i just got my hands dealt in a whole bunch of stuff i'm excited for the future i'm trying to change the music industry of how it works as in the way that i want to run it as in i don't i like i said being humble i want to help people i want to put smiles on people's faces i don't want to take your money i want to make people money and plus i want to make my own money too but i don't i don't need to rape somebody for their talent i want to the, see the world i want the world to see what i see Cause that makes me happy when I see people smiling because of music and being happy and changing themselves. That's what I want. Yeah. So that's basically kind of my goal that I want to, I love it. I so where can they find you Brandy? Well, you can know right now we got Ebony and Ivory group on Instagram. Um, you can even go Brandy Lee. Um, well, there'll be a lot of the changes. We're doing a lot of growing right now. Um, you know, they find me on 1002 as well with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'll put it all out, right? Like, yeah. su- like subscribe, follow. I'll put it all, all on before Brandy obviously um, gets launched. Yeah. And uh, we'll I be appreciate doing your time. I I love seeing you. Like we just do well together. I always appreciate seeing I know. you. That we need to do so it more. Fun. Yeah, for sure. I know life gets in the way, but okay. we'll do it more. It's awesome. All right. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome.